Now let's look at some shortcuts to simplifying exponents. And the first shortcut we're going to look at is something called the product rule. And what the product rule relates to is when you multiply the same base together. Now I'm going to show you by definition what you're supposed to do, and I want you to see what I'm actually doing and see if you can figure out the shortcut before I actually give it to you. For example, if I have a to the third power times a to the fourth power, if I were to simplify that by the definition of exponents, this is what I have to do. I have to expand it out. So that means a cubed is a times a times a, and then a to the fourth is a times a times a times a. And then I need to rewrite it, this quantity, I need to rewrite that quantity as an exponent. And so I get a to the seventh power. Or I can just think of it this way. I have three a's and four a's multiplied together. How many a's is that all together? Well, it's seven. So the shortcut when you have the same base is just to add the exponents. That's the shortcut, just add the exponents. And it makes sense because if you think about these things all expanded out, you have three a's and then four a's gives you a total of seven a's. All right, now here's how I write this as an actual rule. And I'm gonna put it in a little cloud. It says if a is not equal to zero, and then in algebra one, we have to say our exponents are integers because you don't look at non-integer exponents until later. Um, a to the m times a to the n, same base, multiplied together. What I do is I add the exponents. So this is called the product rule. So to do a quick example, if I have negative c to the third power times negative c to the fifth power, that's exactly the same thing as negative c to the 3 plus 5 power, which is negative c to the 8th. Now, I'm not supposed to have parentheses, so I just have to figure out what the sign is going to be for negative c to the 8th. Negative c is going to be multiplied out an even number of times, so that's just going to be c to the 8th power. And that's how you use the product rule. Now, of course, I can fancy things up slightly by putting more than just the base in there, like having 4x squared times 3x to the fourth, well, if I want to simplify this, I first have to put together things that can be multiplied together using my commutative property of multiplication. So I get 4 times 3 times x squared times x to the fourth, and 4 times 3 is 12 by substitution, but x squared times x to the fourth is x to the sixth by the product rule. And so that expression simplified is 12x to the sixth power. Now I can use multiple variables as well. I just have to remember to arrange things via the commutative property that can be simplified. So if I have x to the third, y to the third, times x to the fifth, y to the thirteenth, I can rearrange via the commutative property to get x cubed times x to the fifth, y cubed times y to the thirteenth, and then I can use my product rule to say that I have x to the eighth, y to the sixteenth. Because remember, I just have to add the exponents. Now, if you forget the product rule, you can just imagine these things expanded. Three x's, five x's gives me eight x's total. Three y's, thirteen y's, all multiplied together gives me y to the sixteenth. And of course, this rule is going to work with negative exponents as well. So if I have m cubed, m to the fourth, m to the negative sixth. Instead of you know getting rid of the negative exponent by taking the reciprocal, what I can just do is use the product rule and add up all the exponents, taking into consideration that that's a negative six. So I'm going to add a negative six. So it's three plus four plus negative six, which gives me m to the first power, which is just m. So now let's see if you can do very simple problems with this property on your own. So check number one, I want you to simplify b squared times b to the eighth, and I want you to simplify d to the negative two power times d to the fourth. So now we're going to explore the power rule, which is the shortcut for raising a power to a power, which just means taking an exponential expression and raising it to an exponent. So let's look at this by definition. And once again, I want you to see what I'm doing and think about it. 
and see if you can figure out the shortcut before I actually give it to you. So by definition, f squared raised to the fifth power is f squared times f squared times f squared times f squared times f squared. Or I have five groups of twos. And if you remember from elementary school, what operation is groups of? Or I can think of it as, now I can use my product rule and say I have f to the 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. And remember what a repeated addition is from elementary school. That's just f to the 2 times 5 or f to the 10th power. So what I do when I raise a power to a power? Well, I'm going to multiply the exponents. Of course, I have to write this rule in a little cloud. If a is not equal to 0 and in algebra 1, m and n are integers, because I have to have integer exponents in algebra 1. If I have a to the m raised to the nth power, that's a to the m times n power. And this is called the power rule. So a quick basic level example of using the power rule. This works with positive or negative exponents, it doesn't matter. Um, if I have h to the fourth raised to the negative sixth power, the power rule says I take the exponents and just multiply them together. So I get h to the negative 24th power. Now that's not simplified because I cannot have a negative exponent. And if I remember negative exponents mean reciprocals, that means I have one over h to the 24th power. So now let's check to see if you get how the power rule works. I want you to simplify g cubed raised to the 10th power and k to the negative third raised to the negative fourth power. So now we're going to look at the product to a power rule, which is a shortcut for a product of multiple bases raised to a power. And once again, we're going to look at this by definition, and you see if you can figure out the shortcut. So by definition, um, I want to simplify this expression. 3x squared raised to the fourth power. And what this means is I take 3x squared and I multiply it by itself four times. Uh -oh. Now I use my commutative property and I rearrange the things that can be simplified so they are right next to each other. And so I see that I have four threes multiplied together, which is three to the fourth, and that I have four x squared multiplied together, which is x squared raised to the fourth power. And then I can just simplify this. Three to the fourth is 81, and then use my power rule to get x to the eighth. Now this is the shortcut right there, and what did I do to each base? Well, if I have a product raised to a power, then I just have to make sure each of the bases gets that exponent. So it's not really distribution. You kind of want to say distribution, because 3 gets raised to the fourth power and x squared gets raised to the fourth power, but it's not really distribution. So we can say kind of like sprinkle, which is not an official math word. So we need to sprinkle the exponent, and that's the shortcut. Okay, and like all the other properties, it has a formal way in which it is written. So once again, a cannot equal 0, and then I need another base, b cannot equal 0. And I want to say that m, my exponent, is an integer. And what this rule says is if I have some product a, b raised to the nth, nth power, it is the same thing as a to the mth times b to the mth. And this is product to a power. So everything inside the parentheses gets raised to that power. And it could be more than two things. It could be three, four, five, six. Now notice it's product and not sum. If, that, if I change the operation between a and b to a plus or a minus, this whole thing has to be chucked out because this does not work for addition or subtraction. It only works for multiplication and in a little bit division. So let's do a couple of examples. So let's say I have x squared y cubed raised to the fifth power. The product to a power rule says I have to raise the x squared and the y cubed to the fifth power. So x squared to the fifth times y cubed to the fifth. And then I can just use my power rule that says I'm going to end up with x to the tenth 
y to the 15th. So now this also works for negative exponents. So if I have x cubed t to the third all raised to the negative one power, I can use the product to a power rule to say, well, it's going to be x cubed raised to the negative one and t cubed raised to the negative one, which is x to the negative three, t to the negative three, which means I have one over x cubed times one over t cubed, which is one over x cubed, t cubed. Now, if you remember the definition of a negative exponent, you could have gone straight from here to there, because remember, negative exponent means reciprocal. And what's the reciprocal of x cubed, t cubed? Well, it's one over x cubed, t cubed. So this example is a really important example. It doesn't seem like it is, but it really is. Um, because if you just see this as a product to a power rule, you have to go through all these steps to simplify. But if you look at this as a negative exponent, you can really just do one step and remember it's the reciprocal. So the more rules you get, the more things I can kind of combine together and the more things you have to think about. So before you go ahead and simplify something just because it's you know in a certain unit or with a certain lesson, stop and think about the problem and see if there's an easier way to look at it using a, a, a rule that we used before. Now on to the final check. Let's see if you can do some product to a power rule questions on your own. I want you to simplify 5x to the fifth all raised to the third power and simplify 2x to the negative 2y all raised to the fourth power. 